Hey guys, Coach Alex here from Fast Fitness Tips. I'm here to talk to you about chain wear today. And I'm gonna kick off by telling you how many watts I think you're losing by having a slightly old chain. And all you need to do to discover this is follow three simple steps. Step one, get hold of a good quality ruler. Step two, measure your chain in exact whole links. The number of whole links, as in this illustration, you don't need to even tell me how many, just make an accurate measure of whole links. Step three, put that measurement into our spreadsheet and I will tell you, well, literally the spreadsheet will tell you how many watts you're losing, not by virtue of it being dirty or rusty, just by virtue of it being slightly old and let's say slightly elongated. Now, if you can spare me an extra five minutes, why don't we talk about the subject of chain wear in a bit more detail? Yes, it sounds quite boring, but it's actually important. If you attend to chain wear early, you will prolong the life of your drivetrain. You'll help drivetrain efficiency. You'll have a better shifting experience. You'll waste less watts on the road and your drivetrain will be quieter and more efficient generally. Now we know there's a lot of chain tools out there, aren't there? You know, like this Park tool, Park tool 0.75% and 1% wear indicator. You know, if you've got one in your toolbox, that's great. You know, get it out, use it. You don't really need to listen to this video. You've got all the tools. You don't need to listen to me. But I bet there are times when you either don't have that tool or don't have that tool handy. And this is where you can use direct chain tool measure. Well, <laughs> I'm saying that tongue in cheek. What is my fancy direct chain tool measure? Yes, guys, it's a ruler. It's a simple ruler. Now, you don't want to use a tape measure. You don't want to use an old wooden ruler that may be inaccurate. We're talking about tight tolerances here, aren't we? We're talking about, you know, 1% of the total chain length or maybe even 0.5%. For those of you who got top quality 11 or the latest, you know, Campag 12-speed chain, you know, those tolerances are very tight. Those, those, those chains are very well made. So we're going to have to have a precise measure. Now we can use a ruler for sure. It's not out of the question to use a ruler. And if the chain's on the bike and you're using hole links, put it across the top of the bike like this, across the top of the chain. But hang on, hang on, we've got a problem. How many links are we gonna measure? Is the ruler accurate? And moreover, what is 0.75% in inches when we're measuring eight links? This is really confusing. Okay, well, a quick heads up about that. If you were measuring six lengths plus a sixteenth over six inches is almost one percent and if you were measuring eight lengths then plus sixteenth is almost 0.75 percent elongation and if you could be bothered to take the chain off the bike and there is a reason for doing that by the way because the longer the chain measurement the num more the number of links the more accurate your overall estimate of elongation is going to be so if you could take the chain off the bike and measure let's say 25 links then a quarter of an inch is exactly one percent elongation or 54 links that's whole links not pin to pin then half an inch is exactly 1% elongation. But come on guys, we can do better than this. This is 2018. Can't we make a chart of any number of links measured with any decent amount of elongation? Let's say 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, and 0 0.1. I mean, one, not 0 0.1. Yes, of course we can. This is Fast Fitness Tips. We can do anything here. So here's the chart, which I'm going to put you the link below, of the number of links in the chain and the elongation. I've even rounded it to sixteenths in case your ruler happens to show like mine, you know, your old school ruler shows these annoying sixteenths rather than tenths. So we can use this chart, but wait, 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 wait for it, guys. I said this is 2018. We're not in the 1980s chart territory here. I don't want to use a chart. I want to measure in either millimeters or inches. And I want to use any length, any precise length. What can we do? And as if by magic, here's the Fast Fitness Tips chain wear calculator. Put in your preferred units, you can work in millimeters or inches. Put in how many links you're measuring over, any number basically. And then it will tell you your chain measurement should be this length and your, your actual measurement is Y length and therefore your chain elongation is this percent. It would even tell you the watts lost, roughly your watts lost, due to a badly worn elongated chain. And it will give you a recommendation of when to change. So when to change. Sorry, that was a Freudian slip, not when to chain, when to change. 
So you can do all this with our calculator, which you can download in the link below. And this will give you a very flexible way of working out chain stretch or elongation. But wait guys, there are some other issues to consider. One issue is that baseline old chains, you know, 10 or nine speed, didn't always come out of the factory at one inch or half an inch for pin to pin. Sometimes there was some stretch at baseline. Also, chains do deform under load. I mean, they say stretch. The metal doesn't stretch, but those microscopic gaps between pin and bushing, for example, do get compressed. There's an elasticity in a chain. And also, chain wear isn't entirely uniform from pin to pin. You know, you can get a variance even in a worn chain of maybe 40-50% between links, which is surprising, definitely. And for those that don't believe me that chains do have an, a certain degree of deformation ability, that's a deformation that allows them to re recoil back to their previous length. If you hang a 75 kilogram weight off the end of a chain, and this is actually part of a chain, 31 pin to pin lengths, you will get a deviation. That deviation might be, you know, a millimeter or so, but it's still significant. When we're talking about elongation rates, of a millimeter or so when we're measuring for chain wear. So this is a concern. Now, fortunately, Whippam and Connex has tested not just deformation, but it's also tested wear, as in how much does your chain wear under load on the machine, but within fairly real world conditions, you know, they introduced dirt and grime into that equation. And from that, we can model it back into the model of chain wear, as in prediction model of chain wear deterioration. So this is for advanced users now, for those that are still staying with me. If you use their modeling, and we've done a little bit of you know fancy maths behind the scenes in Fast Fitness Tips, you can actually work out that if you tell me your cycling distance per year, I'll tell you your chain predicted expiry date based on a chain expiry threshold, you know, of 0.75 or whatever. And if you want to do it by the first and second measurement method, which is basically measure at one date and then measure again at a second date, I'll show you your chain expiry date from this. So from that data, you can use something like this micrometer gauge or yeah, sure, a plain ruler is fine. But if you're using a small number of links, if you're measuring a small number of links, you can use a micrometer gauge. And here, you know, I can see the chain length should be across five links, five inches, but it actually is 5.085 or 129.18 millimeters. Okay, let's have a play with that in the calculator just for one second to show you how it works. Okay guys, so this is your heads up about the Fast Fitness Tips Wear Calculator, which is already uploaded onto Google Sheets, as I said, link below. Now, we're talking about measurement of whole links here and you can select your units at the top. Now, as an example, why don't we take the GCN example already on their website, how to know when to change chain cassette and chain rings. Now, in their example, they said, uh, look at eight links, measure eight inches, and if it's one tenth over, then you know it's time to replace. Although, confusingly, they actually show in the video a ruler with 16th measures, and the chain looks like it's coming up to one sixteenth over, not one tenth, as in the next section of the ruler. So let's try that in our calculator. Let's say that you prefer to work in inches, that you're having eight links, which should be eight inches long, but you actually find it's 8.1 inches as indicated by them. And of course, that's 0.1 inches over, and that's 1.25% over ideal. So that would be quite a significant deviation. Most people would say that's waiting a long time in order to change your chain at that point. If you want to refer back to the table, you can do. So here's the table at eight links. If you had 0.5% deviation, then you'd have eight and one twenty-fifth actually, and 0.75 would be three fiftieths, which is very similar, very close to one sixteenth. So actually a recommendation of changing your chain if you've measured eight links at one sixteenth seems to be about the ballpark figure. Let me show you one more example then. Let's do Fast Fitness Tips example from the video where I'm looking at this worn chain over five links. Well, five links would be five inches, wouldn't it? But I actually measure it in the video coming up as 5.085. And that would be, as you see here, 1.7% over, significantly time to change, definitely. That can also work in millimeters if you want to do it that way. 
Now here's the thing. Let's say it was five links and one, two, seven, and I actually measured it at one, two, eight, which would be 0.79 over. In the where predictor, we can say, well, when will it be 1% over, given that it's actually 0.79% today? And let's say I rode 555 kilometers a year, let's say, not an awful lot, but what well, I'm asking the spreadsheet to work out, to forward predict when I'm gonna cross the threshold of 1.1% 1. Uh, 1 worn, given I'm 0.79% worn now, and that's my distance. Well, it would tell me that I'm gonna cross that in 270 days from now, i.e. 16th of Jan. Or let's say I was cycling, you know, 1500 kilometers a year, then I'd cross that threshold. My chain would be worn at 1%, 103 days from now. And if I preferred to take a second measure, let's say it's 128 today, but it's gonna be 129 millimeters long in June, then it will calculate that extrapolating it forward, the chain's gonna be worn out in 77 days from now. So the chain calculator is more than just a chain measurement and elongation device. It will give you a recommendation when to change. It will tell you about your watts lost and it will predict when it's time for your chain to change in the future. That's a tongue teaser, isn't it? When it's time for your chain to change in the future. All right, guys, back to the main video. One last thing then, what about you guys? And I'm sure there's quite a few of you say, I can't be bothered to buy the expensive gauge. I can't be bothered with the Park Tools manual gauge. I don't even have a ruler to hand. Come on, Coach Alex, all I have is nothing. I've got my hands and nothing else. What am I gonna do? Well, in your case, the solution is to do that old mechanics tip of testing for chain slop side to side. That implies the pins and the bushings are worn within the chain. If it's sloppy, like this chain, you know, it's probably time to replace. And also do the old mechanics tip of pulling the chain off the chain ring whilst it's on. You know, you can see if it's as loose as this and you can see clear daylight, especially the top of the tooth, then something's wrong. Rotate your cranks and see how well the chain is sitting on the crank set and on the chain ring. If the chain is worn like this, you're gonna get some gaps appearing, which is also bad. And the reason for that, the reason for this whole video really, not only is it inefficient riding with a worn chain, not only is the shifting poor, not only are you losing watts, but you're wearing your drivetrain down. And basically you're wearing down your chain rings and your cassette. So it goes from like a shark fin style tooth to, as shown here, a shark tooth tooth. Okay, that's really confusing. Shark fin is this shape and shark tooth is pointy in this shape. That's what you're doing to your drivetrain. You're putting excessive force through your drivetrain and you accelerate the wear. It's not perfectly linear. The wear goes up. The wear goes up with time. All right, guys, that's everything I want to tell you about chain wear and the little calculator which you can use, link below. Check us out on Patreon. Oh, wait, before you go, guys, I just have to tell you something just occurred to me. Everything was working fine in the chain wear calculator. You can use it as advertised in this video. But then I thought to myself, I can improve on this right now by doing something super clever. I can work out the number of links that you're measuring over without even you having to tell me. So I can save you putting in the number of links that you're measuring over. All you need to do is take an exact measurement over whole links. So choose four or more. Just take the measurement and you do not need now in version two to tell me how many whole links you're measuring over. It will work it out for you. For example, so if I did 666 over X number of whole links, it will tell you that was 26 links. It should have been 660. Your chain is 0.85% worn. So the calculator magically works out the nearest whole link and then does it, all its calculations from that. So I'm now renaming this the Fast Fitness Tips Magic Chainware Calculator. You see, it is worth sticking to these videos to the end. All right, take care, guys. Until next time.